I'm thinking, oh, see that? I could have played none of those birds there. Oh, oh. Got him. Nice one, mate. They're definitely heating up as the day goes on. Oh, that's, a that's a genuine big school tuna. Look at him go! Oh! <laughs> Got him. Oh, man. That is pretty awesome. Around 290 kilometres west of Melbourne lies the small coastal town of Port Ferry. During the early 19th century, the west coast of Victoria was used by whalers and seal hunters. The bay at Port Ferry was given its name by the crew of a whaling boat, the Ferry. In the 1800s, Port Ferry was established mainly to support the whaling industry, and for a while it was one of the largest ports in Australia. Many of the town's original buildings are still used today, particularly in the main street, most of which are now heritage listed. In the mid 1800s, wars were raging in Europe and the United States. The colonial government in 1877 was concerned that a potential threat existed to some of Victoria's main ports from enemies of the British Empire. So fortifications were built in order to protect them. You can still see the armoury and cannons that made up part of the defences at Port Ferry up on the hill and only a short walk from the boat ramp. Today, Port Ferry has a population of just under 3,000 people, which swells to over 80,000 during the annual Port Ferry Music Festival. It's a beautiful town to visit, and with its colonial charm, it's not surprising it was voted one of the world's most livable cities in 2012. After arriving late in the afternoon, I checked into the Port Ferry Big Four Holiday Park. Tomorrow was going to be an early start and hopefully a successful day on the water. The wind's dying off and it's time to go fishing hey, with my going? very, good very good mate, Scotty Gray. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, good. It's looking like a good day. It is. The wind's died. It was blew its backside off yesterday. Now, if you don't know, Scott Gray is the man in the west coast of Victoria. There's probably not an inch of sand or rock that you haven't been on, Scotty. And when Scotty walks out his front door, let me tell you, the fish quiver, especially if you're a trout in winter yep. or a tuna in autumn. What have we got happening today, mate? Oh, we're really lucky at the moment. We've got some great, uh, good size inshore bluefin tuna. Yep. So they've been around now for a few weeks' time. Now, Scotty, it, it's autumn. Most people think bluefin tuna, the 65K run to places like the Horseshoe. Mm. We're not doing that because no. we've got the centre console. That's right, and we don't need to do that at the moment. The fish are in sort of anything up to 5Ks from shore, but some fish are right in behind the breakers. So, Beautiful. you know, we mightn't have to travel far today, fingers crossed, and hopefully we can do a bit of casting too. Beautiful. Casting more so than trolling? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I really got into my casting now. Like, trolling's fun, great way to find fish, but if you want to have fun, get your light spin outfit out and cast a few lures. Yeah. Well, I have been looking forward to this for weeks because I'm sick of seeing the photos of Scott on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get this boat in and go right. catch some. Scotty, the GPS says four miles from the lighthouse at Port Ferry. Yep. And it's all happening. There's there. mate. There's birds everywhere. We've seen some fish jumping out of the water. It's looking pretty promising. Beautiful. Pretty yeah. Now, I love fishing for surface feeding pelagics, but there's a bit of a technique to this. So can you explain? What I want to do is, you know, instead of just going through and trolling through, we'd probably put the fish down. Yep. They're actually pretty finicky. What we want to do is try and get upwind of the fish and then, you know, basically use the wind, drift back onto the fish and then cast some lures in. That's it. It's a pretty simple formula because the bait they're feeding on is about that long. Yep, very small. And what they'll do is push that bait into the wind and into the waves because it's like them trying to swim into a headwind. 
and the old tuner finds it pretty easy to mop them up then, yeah, doesn't he? Exactly. Let's go do it. It's all about positioning and a bit of fancy casting. Smashed it. Yeah, I'll swap sides, dude. Oh. There you go, mate. I'll swap sides. How's that? Oh, yeah. It's like a good fish, too. Yeah. Good boil. So non visual, but you know they're there. Just yeah, know what the birds are doing. And we're actually, we've got a, a couple of hundred of these little. Oh, there's one on me. Oh, there's oh. one chasing me. Shearwater's here, and there was this one turn dipping right at the front of all these birds. And he sort of gives away that there's a tuna there and it was just a matter of positioning the boat to get the bite. These fish have been so flighty this morning. Literally, you get within 100 metres of them and... Yep. Uh, Down they go. Oh, how's he going? Is he going forward, is he, now? Oh, he's out of here. I reckon it might be a good fish, Lee. I don't think, think it's going to so. be a jelly bean. <laughs> there around. he is. He's not a bad fish, got him yeah, on the I'll surface look, there. I'm pretty there sure that was a good strike. It's hard too with a light gear, you know. They, when they do get under the boat, they yes. really do those circles and it's hard to get their head up. But this one's really playing the game. He's um, right up on the top, so yeah, he's doing all the right stuff. Nice and quickly. He's not far off now, mate. All right. all right, ready for the net, mate? Yeah, mate. He has inhaled that thing. Mate, that right. is a nugget. <laughs> Whoa! There you go, man. <laughs> How's that for a fish? That's a genuine big school tuna. Some people drive all the way to the shelf to catch those. And we've, we've just driven 5Ks out from the ramp. You can you see know? the water tower and you can see the pine trees of Port Ferry. Now, realistically, Scotty, what do you think that would weigh? Oh, I reckon it'd be a good 18 to 20 kilos. That is... Definitely. As good a school tuner as you could ever hope to get. Look at that. What a donkey of a fish. It's a ripper, isn't it, mate? That is awesome on spin gear. I wasn't joking when I said there was some good fish in place at the moment. Not, not a long fish, but look at the condition on this. If we roll him up there, look at that through the back there. That is just big. Check out where that lure went. It just went straight down the hatch. You can just see that little x rat stick bait in his gob there. Mate, I think we better get the hook out of this guy and yep. yeah, no worries. pop him back. What do you think? Yeah, that no, sounds good, mate. What a way to start a day. There they are, dude, under those turns. Yeah, mate. Never lie, the turns. No, they don't do that. season, whenever you see turns, you know you remember the go. And it's amazing, even on the giant tuna, the 100 kilo fish, you can have a thousand birds and seals and everything happening, and then off to the side, there'll just be two turns sitting 200 metres away, and that's quite often where the big fella will oh, be. Oh, see that? Oh, yeah. Splash. Scotty's got the white x wrap cast stick bait prototype, because there's a lot of white bait here, and also because he's caught about 50 bluefin on it in the last week. And I've got the gold, and a lot of people would say, what are you doing with gold? But in cloudy conditions like this, gold reflects light better than silver. And I just find it amazing how effective gold is on so many species, marlin, tuna, trout, brim, everything. And I just find it to be a, a really good starting point for me, but it's good to mix it up. <laughs> How's that? That's just blind too. He is, he does oh, not like you. Mate, Jeff. that was insane. I think my heart just jumped out of my shoes. It was unreal. Just saw this big flash and bang. And it's interesting though, Scotty, you were saying that they're just like, these fish, they're not one big school that's going crazy. It's just no. little pods and they're just, you see these tails just cutting through the water because they don't have to swim that fast to eat a white bait that that's long. Right. Very lazy. And he's just, he hit that quick though. <laughs> And it's that run, that first run, yeah. when they realise what's going on. I think uh, this one uh, might be a little bit worried because there's a seal around the boat. Yeah, I think I saw him just before. Too. Look, if you just so, keep yours busy for a minute there, Scotty, there's another patch of fish working right. their way up towards us. Uh-oh. Seal on him? Seal's on him. Even if you sort of go that way in the boat, and then that way you'll probably swim away, but... um. 
That's it. So you go forward. There's a bunch of tuna going up ahead of us. Got the seal after him now. No doubt about that. Hopefully we can get him away. We'll get him up. Might have something on his tail. <laughs> well, if he plays the right game, he'll give him, we'll net him, we'll take the hooks out and he can go That's back. Right. That's right. Oh, there's tuna carving it up down there, Scotty. Let's see it, look down there, check that out. That is... More birds, you just can't get them in fast enough to go get to the next patch, can you? It's crazy. A lot of people don't realise, you know, the sort of fishery that we've got off the southwest coast here is as good a tuna fishery as you'll have anywhere in, in the world, well, you know? Yeah, exactly. Five metre trailer bait, and you can come out and catch fish up to 20 kilos. Mm. It's well, amazing. saying that, Scotty, it was back a few years ago, we caught 100 yeah, kilo tuna, there. and it was literally in about this line and about eight miles that way. Yep. You know, ridiculous, and they were there for a couple of weeks. I reckon there's a school under the boat, Scott. Yeah. Hang on, I don't know where he's going. That's all right, he's out now. Got me to net him, mate? Yep. He's Get him up. quickly before that seal. Oh, he's just looking at him. Yeah, that's all right. You ready? I'm yeah, walk yeah, backwards. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got him. Got him. Seal's going, what? <laughs> no. Look at this, he's gonna come stick his head out here. Look. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Unreal. Hey, that's wicked. That is way too much fun. And look at this, this is why you have a one piece wire frame in a lure and the toughest lures in the world can get broken if they get in the wrong spot in a fish. But you can see there that wire has actually been ripped out the back of the X-Rap but we still haven't lost a fish because it's just one yep. solid piece. I'll get this hook out gun out mate. Oh, pop that out. Look at it's that. I'll mind your lure Scotty, no you worries, mind mate. your fish. Get back in. Look at that silver sides. A distinguishing feature I find of the bluefin, they're quite black on the inside of the mouth. They've got those yellow finlets, like a yellow fin tuna, but that is the southern bluefin tuna. Beautiful, mate. Back in the water. Well done, mate. Let's go get another one. <laughs> Wicked. That's too good. Put a new lure on for you, Scotty. Thanks, mate. A really good tip. When you find good lures, one of the best bits of info that I can give you, and I think Scott will back me up, is don't just have one. Because if you snap that lure off and that happens, or if you bust a lure, well, you're out of action. We know that this white's a good color. Why? Because Scott's been catching so many fish on it. So we've got multiple white stick baits. Pretty simple. That lure's out of action. Grab another one out tying back on and as Scott drives us up onto another school of tuna I'll put this back on for him and he's ready to catch another fish it's as simple as that you'd be crying if that was the only white one you had for the day a really quick and easy knot to use on any hard body lure is called a loop knot tie a granny knot in the line feed it through the eye just like that back through that loop that you've made make the loop the size you want only needs to be small once twice three times and then we go back through that hole once again. That is a loop knot. It allows the lure to swing and wobble the way it needs to. And it's amazing how a lure that won't swim on a tight knot will swim on a loop knot. That'd be yours. Perfect, mate. Got it. Nice one, mate. Not quite too late, Scott. No. I'll try one over the top, see if I can get the straggler. Right here. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Anyway. They're definitely heating up as the day goes on. Coming up for longer, feeding harder in the morning. It was You couldn't even get close to them. See, we knew they were here, though, didn't we? Yeah. It's just a matter of sticking with that bait and the birds and just waiting. Woo. Nice, mate. Nice. Well, at the start of the fight, the fish were up, was up on the top and it was burning around, ripping line. It's settled in now and it's gone straight down. Pretty typical of tuna. And he's just doing big circles under the bait. And if you look at the line there, you can just see it just going anti-clockwise there, round and round. And I'm just getting him up and getting a metre back or two each pump of the rod. The other good thing about using light tackle is you're not putting heaps of pressure on your outfit. You're not putting heaps of pressure on your leader knot. You're not putting heaps of pressure on the fish. 
So if you're just patient, you take, it might take a little bit longer to land it, but at least you know you're going to get the fish in the boat. Mm. And it doesn't break you, so you can go and do it again. <laughs> That's right. And again, and again. A little bit different to the other ones. This one, uh, I sort of cast in and let it sink for a sec, and, yep. and then bang, straight onto it. And it would make sense to what Scott's saying there. The tuna, as we pulled up, they were feeding on the top. They disappeared. As he's cast in, he lets that lure sink, Here and it just looks like a dying or a dead bait fish that's probably been hit by one of the other tuna, and they're just swimming around, mopping up all the bits and pieces, and that's that's what they've eaten that lure as. Well, he's nearly done, I reckon, Lee. If you want to cool. get that net. That's a solid fish, mate. <laughs> Look at that. A cracker. They're just so big. Slide him this way into the sunlight. And show everyone how good a looking fish he really is. There we go. Now, Scott, I find it interesting that bluefin tuna, for whatever reason, even with a hook in the corner of the jaw, they'll bleed a lot from the mouth. Yep. Is that still okay? That's okay. Actually, um, some, there's been plenty of research being conducted at the moment. It looks like the survival of the fish, if you handle them carefully, yes. you use your single hook so you're yes. not tearing the fish's mouth and you get them back in the water as soon as possible, they actually survive quite well. Beautiful. Do you want so, to pick um, the head of that guy up? Yep. Put him in the sun, show everyone how good he looks. Oh. And, then, and then we'll pop him back. All right, you ready? Oh. It's good yeah. to see them kick in like that. It probably doesn't make the best television shot in the world for poor old Clarky because he's getting water on the lens, but it shows that fish is healthy. That's right, exactly. And you know that if you're letting it go, it's going to survive. And yep. you know, otherwise you'd be better off keeping it and eating. Yep. Exactly. The way I sort of look at that would be, I suppose if we cut our lip or something, it's going to bleed, isn't it? That's right. Yep. But we're not going to die. That's right. <laughs> exactly. On that. All right, over there. Tuna. <laughs> Scotty's moving us back up onto a feeding patch of fish, so I thought I'd take a second just to show you the lures that we're using. And one thing you'll notice straight away is we have multiple rods rigged, and we've got that because we've got a range of different lures we're using, different sizes, colors, and things that they do. One of the great things that's very successful is the X-Rap Long Cast Minnow. It's just like any other X-Rap, has a beautiful swimming action, but most of all, this guy's got a lot of tail weight, and he sinks, so you can cast it a long way, and you can crank it back really fast. So it's sort of like, a metal lure, but it's got a bib, so it's got that bit better action and all those crazy good Rapala colours that you can get them in. A slight variation of that is the Storm So Run Minnow. Great thing about this guy, he's really quite heavy. This guy's about 28 grams, so casts like a rocket and he's really small, so he's going to imitate the bait really well, which is small white bait. The other one, this is a prototype that Scotty's been playing around with a bit. It's the X-Rap stick bait. We're not even sure of the name yet, but it works very well. Again, it's a sinking stick minnow, cast like a rocket, easy to work back through the water, and it's proving to be deadly on tuna. The final little one we've got is the Storm So Run sinking pencil. Again, a little stick bait that sinks. Because it sinks, it's got a bit more weight in it, and that allows you to cast further. So you notice here, there's a couple of lures that are sort of in that 12 centimetre size, and then we've got a couple here that are sort of in that six to eight centimetre size. Either way, we're trying to match the bait. And although a couple of these aren't, you know, specifically looking like a white bait, it's amazing how that changing colour can sometimes get you the bite. Either way, multiple rods rigged. You have a few throws. If that won't work, grab the next rod and try a different lure. Look at that, he is off. Took him a few seconds to actually wake up to what was going on. Awesome service strike, mate. How was that? Do you want me to turn the boat around, mate? No, you're all right, mate. All Keep good. fishing. I'll just go over the top of that other rod. Go to this side. And I'm absolutely loving this gear. The rod, about 150 bucks, and this new Azores 55 spin reel is around the $200 mark. It's got a beautiful drag system in it. It's an amazing piece of gear. It's a great outfit that won't break the bank and we're catching tuna with it and tuna that a lot of people would probably use 50 pound tackle to catch out on the shelf. But in on these inshore grounds, just a whole lot of fun for casting at them. Just keep it coming. 
jumps a bit. Come on, pal. There he is. There he is. Okay. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> that was a bit of an effort. That was actually one. starting to hurt. <laughs> All right. We'll get out of your way. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, mate. Oh, man. Well and I'm saying thank you, because, yeah, that was starting to hurt. <laughs> you weren't that one. <laughs> you do. I think we've earned every fish today, Scotty. That's a it. lot of casts, you know, a lot of refusals, a lot of follows from the tuna, but, you know, that's what keeps it fun. That's it. Very exciting visual fish. Yeah, right? I'll say. I'll get that out of the way. Beautiful looking fish. They are. They look so good in the Arvo sun, don't they? That's it. Big cold water predator. They love cold water. Oh, crazy. Silly fish. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for us. That's it. Cold water and rough oceans. That's what bluefin like. Pop him back, mate. All right. I can hear pizza calling me. So can I. All right. Fancy port fairy pizzas. Maybe just one more school. One more school? Because they're just there. All right. One more. All right. It's home time. Almost. 